Hey yo. Back in the mid to late 2000s, I was a sucker for licensed video games, especially those with the yellow square attached to them. Some that come to mind would be the Spongebob movie game, Creature from the Krusty Krab, and Battle for Bikini Bottom. I remember playing these games a lot on our family's Wii, and I still have the original discs and cases. Yeah, I played GameCube games on a Wii, what do you want? And even though I can look back at some of these titles and say, yeah, Creature was pretty shit. I still hold these games close to my naive childhood where I thought everything but Brother Bear was a masterpiece. But one game that still holds out, even today, is Battle for Bikini Bottom. For consoles. <gasps> sure, it may not be the greatest platformer ever made, but it's pretty solid compared to most licensed games. I don't recall ever coming across any bugs or glitches, and exploring the different locations of Bikini Bottom was fun as a kid. Hell, the idea of a 3D collectathon taking place in the world of SpongeBob is an amazing idea regardless. Think of a 3D collectathon that isn't set in a strange setting with colorful characters. The gameplay was fun with enough variety between the three characters that made traversing and exploring the different locations enjoyable. I recall a massive leap in difficulty in some parts, like the rolling ball puzzle or the second stage of Robo's Spongebob taking me forever to beat, but even at a young age I always loved the challenge. All in all, while it's been a while since I last played the game, Battle was a fun and entertaining game that I still look back on fondly, even after a whole decade. So with all that being said, last year in early June, a remake for an old licensed game that had garnered somewhat of a cult following was announced to be in development. After nearly two decades of being forgotten as an old relic of a generation long gone, THQ Nordic had announced a remaster for an all-time classic, that game being destroy all humans. Okay, but in all seriousness, that game does look really good. Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated was something that I personally thought would never be made. Sure, there's a community centered around the game, and a large consensus of those that played the original said they enjoyed it, but I didn't expect a complete remaster on all modern consoles and PC to ever be greenlit. Granted, they could have ported the original and I would have been on board, but whatever, I guess. Though that begs the question. Since this is a completely new game built from the ground up, is the game good? Well, let's get this out of the way right now. Multiplayer is forgettable. I was a little late to the party by a couple weeks, and by the time I investigated multiplayer, there was no one in online matches. I guess if you have a friend on standby, you might get something out of it, but I'm willing to guess that most people care more about the main game than tacked on side content. As for the multiplayer itself, you fight off against a bunch of robots in a horde mode minigame, and the cut content robot Squidward is there in the background. It's nothing bad, it's just not that interesting. So multiplayer is... Eh, but what is the main game like? Well, it's much better than the gameplay that was shown at Gamescom. Like, much better. Like the original, you can play as both Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy. Patrick can pick up and throw melons, ice fruit, and stun robots. Sandy can lasso enemies from a distance as well as hover over large gaps. And Spongebob has a variety of bubble bash attacks such as bashing upwards, bowling, and turning into missile command. If there was ever a major improvement from the original, it would be the combat with Patrick and Sandy being able to attack while jumping and lassoing enemies in the air. Of course, that's not to say the combat's all fine and dandy. SpongeBob's Bubble Bowl can be a little finicky at times, as the ground may have some rocks and other strange geometry protruding around. The bungee cord was only challenging at the Sea Needle, as well as the Sponge Bowl having moments that feel very scripted. Sliding, while a little stiff on mouse and keyboard, was pretty damn fun though. But aside from some minor tweaks to combat and adjustments to things here and there, this is a one-to-one -one remaster of the original game. While the original battle fit more with its desaturated color palette from the first couple seasons, Rehydrated is more saturated and vibrant with its color palettes. Hell, it looks like a playable version of Sponge on the Run. The only major thing that was imported from the original game were the voice lines from the characters, meaning we still have bootleg crabs and Mermaid Man. While they probably could have gotten Clancy to do the lines for Rehydrated, I personally like the original voice and don't mind it that much. Now, what is inexcusable is how Squidward doesn't yell hey when you cause a giant painting of himself to inexplicitly grow a mustache like in the original. That's where I personally draw the line. Despite the two being roughly the same in execution, Rehydrated is without a doubt the version with the most bugs and glitches. 
That's not to say it's unplayable, for the most part, but the current build of the game could still use some polishing. There was one instance where I got softlocked and some strange geometry, though warping from the menu fixed this. The robot AI can be comparable to a jar of peanut butter at times, and the FPS fluctuated for me depending on which level I was in, Dutchman's Graveyard being the worst. While I consider these to be minor issues, I did come across two major hard locks that forced me to restart a new save file that I cannot ignore. One consisted of the 8 snowman from Sand Mountain disappearing upon replaying the stage, meaning I couldn't collect all the socks in 100% the game. The second, and probably most game-breaking, would be... this? Look, my computer has a crashing issue, and what do you know, it crashed while playing the game. But when I loaded back in, the saturation audio was turned all the way down, and I was unable to change them without my game crashing. If you're having the same issue I had, this could possibly work, though it only works for PC. But yeah, kind of annoying. Now, while these glitches caused me to restart my save file, I didn't mind replaying the game again. Yeah, despite the technical issues, the game is still really fun. Now, while those issues are unintentional and could be patched out, one major issue of intentional game design that I didn't care for would be the price change on Mr. Krabs. For those that don't know, you can exchange shiny objects with Mr. Krabs for golden spatulas, shiny objects being the currency in the game. In the original, the price would start at 3000 and go up by 500 each time you trade with him, until at some point the price would go up by 1000 each time. In total, you would need 39,500 shiny objects for all 8 golden spatulas. In Rehydrated, however, much like the original, the price starts off at 3000 but then goes up by 3000 again each time. At the end of it, you need 108,000 thousand shiny objects to trade into Mr. Krabs. To give you an idea on how long this took me to grind, the fastest way to collect shiny objects is so far at this spot in Goo Lagoon. To get the amount needed to both complete Mr. Krabs as well as gain access to the theater, it took me well over an hour to grind. And keep in mind, I knew about this place prior. I can only imagine what players who don't know about this location went through. Also, about the theater, 40,000 shiny objects for some promotional artwork for the game I just played? Yeah, no. If I had to design a graph for my enjoyment with this game, it would probably look something like this. Oh wait, they fixed Mr. Krabs' pricing to be the same from the original, and they added actual concept art into the theater? Well, uh... Fuck. I guess that's what I get for taking so long to finish these videos. Oh well, I spent time grinding in this game, so I'm gonna keep that paragraph. Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, despite its issues, is a fun 3D collectathon and faithful remaster of an old classic. That's honestly the best way I could describe it. Is it perfect? No. Is it attempting to do something new? No. Is it buggy? Yeah. Did I enjoy my time? Absolutely. Rehydrated isn't groundbreaking in attempting something new or changing the way we look at platformers or drastically altering the gameplay and core mechanics to better suit players of today's generation, whatever that means. It's a remaster for an old game that alters some minor issues from the original, whether for better or for worse, while being as faithful to the original as possible. It may not have the spit and shine it needs to be the best it could possibly be, but a little rust isn't going to stop the car from running. What the fuck? The original isn't amazing either, but it doesn't need to be. All I care about is whether the game is fun or not, and Rehydrated is something that both fans of the original and newcomers can enjoy. All in all, I'd give Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated a slightly rusted golden spatula out of a slightly bent 9-iron covered in dry blood. I personally enjoyed my tie. Wait a minute. The series chronicles the adventures and endeavors of the title character and his aquatic friends in this fictional underwater city of Bikini Bun. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me this whole game takes place? Okay, you know what? I changed my mind. Rehydrate is a 0 out of 10. Too much fucking water. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, I'm not done yet. While I don't have anything else to say about Rehydrated, something that still needs to be addressed is the future of this game. Because surprisingly, depending on how well this game does, we could see more remastered games from Nickelodeon in the near future. And considering 1 million units were just sold as the making of this script, 
this may be a possibility, but if they were to make a new game, which one would they remaster next? Well, personally, I believe it's going to be another SpongeBob game, specifically the first movie game. My reasoning behind this is one, they already have some good character models from the show they made already, and two, a good chunk of the gameplay and enemy variants from Battle is used in the movie game as well. You know the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, so why start completely from scratch if a chunk of your game is already there? Plus, the movie game is a runner-up when it comes to SpongeBob games that aren't Battle. Again, this is just my own predictions, and I could be completely wrong, as even if Rehydrated allows more remakes in the future, a remaster of a game based off a movie that came out in 2004 from a series that's releasing a third film relatively soon is well, strange to say the least. But then again, who knows? Even if Rehydrate is the only remaster we'll ever get from Nickelodeon, I'm still satisfied with what we got. So, uh, yeah. Table, what the fuck is your problem? Squidward had a lamp. Now what is inexcusable is how Squidward doesn't yell hey when you cause a giant penny of himself to explicitly grow a mustache like in the original. 